Now that we have a new way to do layout on the web and a whole new system, there's a lot of old rules that we kind of carried around in our head that we probably want to dump and think about new possibilities to do things that aren't actually CSS Grid or Flexbox or whatever, but they are in fact uh, kind of the core ideas of how to lay out a photo or how to space certain things out. So I want to show you one property, object fit, that might be very handy as you start to size images and make them work inside the layouts that we're making. If you think about how the world used to be, we used to just take an image, make it the size we wanted it to be, and put it on the page. If you wanted it to be 300 pixels wide and 400 pixels tall, you just made it 300 pixels wide and 400 pixels tall in Photoshop or some other program, and you stuck it on the web page. Then when responsive web design came along, we decided that really it would be better to size our images in percent, like 100% wide or 50% wide in this example. And as the page got narrower or wider, the image would fill the content column that it was in and it would just be the correct size to look good in the entire layout. The problem with that is that as the image squishes it also gets shorter or as it gets wider it also gets taller. You want to constrain the aspect ratio especially in a photo like this one, a photograph of Grace Hopper. You don't want to squish the image so you only constrain, you only do one size, you only make it, you only adjust the width of one direction. You don't adjust the width of the other direction. You just let the other direction be the size that it's going to turn out to be. But in the new world with grid and other things, we might actually want to be able to say this is going to be a certain height and this other thing is going to be a certain, is a squishy width. So for this example, the photo is 50% wide, it's fixed at 400 pixels tall, and it is screwing up the aspect ratio of this image. So what might we do instead, especially for a content image, not a background image, but an image that's actually a content image on the page. We have this new property called object fit and here it's being utilized as object fit cover with the value of cover where I've said hey I want the box to be this particular size and the box is changing based on the context that it's in but the image is not being squished the image is being allowed to maintain its aspect ratio and it's just being cropped that's not always a good use case there are plenty of times where people might say I don't want the images to get cropped by robots and computers I want to carefully crop the images by hand and we can't have that but there are many other use cases where this would be incredibly helpful where you can go ahead and let the computer crop the image to the space that's available so here's the code for this where I've said I want this image to be a width of 50 percent a height of 400 pixels and I apply the object fit cover code to it and boom, we've got an image that's going to fit in the space that we've defined and it's going to maintain its aspect ratio. Here I've mixed this principle together, object fit cover, along with some viewport height units to set the height of the header. The words grace hopper are set in viewport, height, uh, viewport units as well, viewport width units, so that they fit into the space that's available. You scroll down, you can see a drop cap and some multi-column layout happening. Mix all of these things together and you can start to do some very interesting graphic design. Object fit also has other values besides cover. There's object fit contain, fill, none, scale down. I made a demo here at this page that you can check out exactly what each of those do, especially it depends on whether or not the image is bigger than the space that's available or whether the image is smaller than the space that's available. They behave slightly differently. Um, but dig in, you can see what else it does. You can also read the page at MDN, read the descriptions and see what the other options are. There's also a property called object position where you can set the point on which the cropping will happen. The image I just showed you, for instance, has the default of 50% and 50%, which means the very center point is going to crop evenly on all four sides. You can move that point so that it's maybe over on one side or the other and all the cropping happens on one side of the photo or the other side of the photo. But these two properties, object fit, object position, new tools that we really all need to know about, not just developers, but designers. So we can start to think about how do we want to create a flexibility model for our layout so that our layout system responds to whatever kind of content is thrown at it. And we've got something beautiful and interesting and that underlines our brand or best conveys our content or best creates a user experience or user interface for the app that we're building. Um, powerful tools that we should definitely know about.